Let's talk about the long run Phillips curve. The Phillips curve is a way for us to understand the relationship between inflation or the inflation rate and the unemployment rate. On the long run Phillips curve model, we have a downward sloping short run Phillips curve and an inelastic long run Phillips curve. The short run Phillips curve shows us the inverse relationship between inflation and unemployment. Or said another way, as prices rise, unemployment falls. As prices in the economy fall, the unemployment rate rises. The long run Phillips curve is inelastic. Therefore, inflation has no impact on unemployment rate in the long run. So at long run, we have a stable economy of about 5% unemployment and maybe 3% inflation rate. So at this intersection, the economy is essentially in balance, or long-run equilibrium. On the AP exam, they will instruct you on what percentages to use. Now, the AP exam might ask you to start your long-run Phillips curve with an inflationary gap. Think about it. If you have an inflationary gap, essentially prices are higher and unemployment is lower. So we're going to begin our inflationary gap to the left of long-run intersection. Additionally, the AP exam may require you to graph a recessionary gap. Well, during a recession, generally prices come down, unemployment rises, so our recessionary gap will end up on the right of equilibrium. How does a recessionary gap self-correct? Effectively, it is the same logic that we use for our short-run aggregate supply curve. As people's expectation of inflation, in this case, fall, their demand for wages will also fall. Sticky wages will become flexible. As businesses are able to produce more in the short run, this brings us back to long run equilibrium. Remember that a shift to the right of SRAS is reflected as a shift to the left in SRPC. It's often helpful to set up the aggregate supply and demand model next to this graph to show the cause and effect relationship and the connection between SRAS and SRPC. To self-correct an inflationary gap, what we have to imagine is that people's inflationary expectations are higher. So people begin to expect the inflation, they now want higher wages, the price of many input costs come up, and effectively, businesses can no longer produce where they once did or overperform. So whereas we see the SRAS shift to the left, in this case, we see the SRPC shift to the right. Finally, let's look at the long-run Phillips curve with the conditions of stagflation. Stagflation is a result of a contractionary economy combined with high prices. What I need to be able to show are higher prices due to some sort of a supply shock combined with higher unemployment. The only way to resolve this condition on this graph is to shift my SRPC to the right, creating a whole new menu of options with a new SRPC curve. Now remember, it's important to understand where this bullet point ends up. Again, we want higher prices and higher unemployment putting us to the right of long run.